Hello and good day. This video serves as a tutorial on how to use our project College of Computer Studies Faculty Attendance System. First, I am going to tackle about the admin side of this system. So now let's log in first by entering the pre-made account of the admin that we had created. So the username is mdarlene, in short for Mom Darlene, our program secretary in College of Computer Studies department. But she can change her credentials right away after logging in. So the password is UIC mdarlene2020. Let's copy it. And sign in. So now, this is the admin dashboard. And here are its following functionalities. So, in the top right corner, we can see this familiar username. Let's click into it to change credentials. So there is a note to only change one credential at a time. So let's first change user details. Uh, let's write the real name of Mom Darlene, which is Darlene Joy Stomata Pissor. And click Save Changes. And as we can see, you see the user details successfully changed. And now, let's test changing the password as well. Let's change it to 123, 123. Confirm the password. Save changes. And as we can see, password successfully changed. Now, let's go to the import data section. Let's scroll down. So, here... You can select what semester and year you want the database to be filled with your import, which is the Excel file, which contains all of the basic information for the system to work, such as the professors and subjects. Let's open the Excel file to best explain how it works. So these are the column headings that are needed to be present in order for the system to recognize all this data. There are hidden functionality of our system to handling this import data functionality. First, the system recognizes if the data is du duplicated. So if we look in here, as we can see, the data is duplicated. It had all the same information. The system recognizes this duplicated data and only insert one data instead of two. So the second hidden functionality is the system allows multiple insertion of subject schedule as long as it has uniqueness such as these ones, where it looks like duplicated, but as we can see, if we slide all the way here, in the subject room, as we can see, it has different room. Because one subject schedule can have two different rooms at a given day. So now let's go back to the system. Let's now select the semester from year and to year that we want the professors and subject to be placed. Uh, let's locate the Excel file and open it and upload it. Can wait for a couple of seconds and surely enough we get this message now in here is the admin subject management in here we can see the list of subjects by selecting a semester to show 
So we imported or we placed the import data into the first semester 2019-2020 earlier. So let's respectively select it. And surely enough, we get this list of subjects. Now, as we scan this list, there is no duplication of data. It might look like a duplication, but it actually not. So, for example, in here, this schedule is on Monday with the same data in here, but with different, different day, which is Wednesday. And in here, it's the same data, same day, Monday, but different section. So now we can see the uh, visualization of the uniqueness of the data. So there is, there is, and I am guaranteed that we have used the correct algorithm to not let the database filled with duplication of data. So as we can see in here, there is a unique one which is the professor code. The professor code is actually the first letter of the professor name and their whole family name. If we look at the Excel file for a second, we get this row or column and we get this proof F name, header. This is actually the first name and proof L name, header, which is actually the last name or family name. So let's go back to the system. Now we can see this edit button and let's try to click it. See what happens. So, as we can see in here, here is the capability of the system to edit the imported subject to give chance for mistaken inputs. So, let's say, for example, we have mistaken to put Friday on this particular schedule. So, let's try to remove it and see what happens. So, this is actually money literacy. So, this is here let's update it friday must be removed and surely enough let's select semester to show we remove the friday schedule so and also if we click this here link we will have a chance to create subject schedule manually if we forgot to include it in excel file let's just select the semester we want it to be added And surely enough, we added it right in here. Let's move on and go to the professor management. And in here are the list of professors. Here contains all the professors that is imported from the Excel file. Uh, the admin cannot do anything but view it because the admin can only create a professor using the excel file that i had mentioned earlier so this excel file as we do it for a quick demonstration the administrator can only create a user or a professor by providing this information or data moving along let's go to the last functionality of this system which is the main one the attendance management functionality so you can find here all the information about attendance in the system you can also create attendance 
here so let's click to it uh, let's select semester from year as well as to year in here is a read only date input box uh, it is intended to be disabled or read only to prevent human error because if it is not disabled the admin might create attendance in unprecedented day so let's save it and select semester to show and surely enough we get our precedented day so now let's go to the main event which is the checking of records so let's click this little i button with the show record header in here so let's wait for a second okay uh this might be confusing at first glance but please only focus on one professor's card and analyze so let's try to analyze this first as it shows the information of a professor room section subject schedule their time in and time out and as well as their remark or reason and their attendance status if either late absent or present in here we can see a little bell ring at the top right corner of a professor's card that little bell ring will be blacked by a count starting from one two three and beyond it's like uh, the notifications that we see on Facebook we browse Facebook we see uh, a block of numbers in a notification area uh, we see it the same in here and in the remarks notification the red mark will appear if the professor added a reason on their part for whatever reason uh, such reason probably because there are they are absent or either late now it is easier to understand and it is simple these cards simply shows that the record today for example friday as what april 17 2020 is will be the determining day of the week day determining day of the week which is friday for subjects to show the system collects all the subjects along with its professors that are equivalent to the determining day of the week which is friday In this example is friday and form it to a card for the benefit of user interface and user experience in short ui and ux and so moving along when clicking the remarks notification button a card will show for the remarks or reason of professors there is probably a text in here uh, for the reasons of professors so this card is connected to the professor or user side if the admin changes the data on this card the data will also be changed to the user side and vice versa furthermore when clicking either one of these two interfaces, a card will show for the information of the user or professor. Why don't we try that? Okay, it works. What about this? And it works. This is the card and it shows today's subject. Let's move you in here. Activity request, which is now blank because uh, the user named or professor named Neil M. Kanyite did not uh, create activity request yet and view table information so today's subject shows the information of the subject that the professor has today these are the today's subject his subject today Friday in the activity request shows the information of the professor and his or her activity request so as I said uh, the user did not yet uh, created an activity request but let's create an activity request so that we can see what it look it looks like let me pause it for a minute so now i have created an activity request let's reload it let's click oh uh, so as we can see there is a black off number that is blocking the little notification bell ring it is really like uh, the notifications that we see in the facebook so if we click in here we can see that Nel in Cañete 
Professor Nell M. Ganyet na created an activity request on Friday, April 17, 2020 at 2.27 a.m. The subject is Node.js, Room 304, Section IP 5A, and the schedule is 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. This is just for uh, dummy purposes. And so, if you mark it as read or read and refresh this page, there is no notification already because of what we did marking it as red and so moving on view table shows the information of all the subject that the professor has so in this in this case professor Neil and Kanyete have only one subject in his first semester 2019 to 2020 time and so moving on let's go and change uh, professor's status so after clicking one of the three choices the admin is then asked to confirm if they are sure to mark the professor so after clicking ok professor will be then marked as the selected three choices so as you can see in here he is updated as present and so if cancel is pressed the page will reload now, this idea of reloading the page when cancelled button is pressed is there to keep the admin updated of the notifications that the professor might send as the little bell ring and remarks notification will show us signal if they have updated. So if we click cancel, the page will autom automatically reload itself. So let's try for example, let's mark him absent. And I will create a dummy data or dummy reasoning in the user side. So let me pause for a minute. So now I had added a dummy data. So let's press cancel so that the page will reload and the remarks will be updated and my dummy data will be shown. So let's wait. And as we can see, there is a notification in the remarks section or notification let's click it and as we can see he this is his reason why he is absent i am absent today mom because i had to compete for world finals in programming uh just it is just for example it is dummy data and so we're done with the attendance management functionality oh and one thing as we might notice there is a picture in here of the real face of or their actual face of the professors because these professors have logged in using their Google account once the professor log in as their Google account their pictures and a Gmail will be saved to my database and it will be shown in here as we see it. and that's all about the attendance management functionality so now let's go to the last functionality of our system let's go back so this button will show a pop-up card pop up card to print the attendance by the selected month so select an existing semester from year and two year enter the date by month and please only select the first day of the month and then select the last day of the month to print the whole month of the year so here we selected the month of April and now select the desired subject so we only want to print Wednesday schedules so let's proceed to the print button and here we can see a neat and easy to organize landscape teachers class attendance report by month with weeks in it so as we can see, only Wednesday schedules are extracted from the database. Let's go back and try to print Monday and Monday, Wednesday and Friday schedules. See if it is really legit. And as we can see, it prints Monday, Wednesday and Friday schedules. As we can see. So that's it for the print. Thank you. So now we are done with the admin side. Now let's go to the user side where the user can sign in 
using their UIC Google account only. You cannot use any other Gmail account but only the UIC Gmail account. The admin can also use their UIC Google account as well. So let's log in. So the user can also change their credentials like what we did earlier in the admin side. But please be careful on changing your name both user and admin side. Because when logging in using UIC Gmail, the system is reliant on your username. So this is this would serve as your username. That is by using the first letter of your name, in this example Neil, that would be N, and the whole family name which is Cañete combined. So this is your username. So in this example is N Cañete. Uh, this would serve as the username or, or professor code in the system. This is used as the main credentials to logging in. So in the system, when changing the user details, Please be sure to it that the username will be the same as what the professor code in your Gmail. That is the word you see in your UIC Gmail account before the underscore. So let's close this out. So now we can see the view table button. This shows the information of all the subject that the professor has. In this example, Neil Cañete, Professor Neil Cañete have only one subject in his time on first semester 2019 to 2020. Let's close this. In the today's subject area, this shows the information of the subject that the professor has today. So in this example, the schedule of his subject, Node.js, is Monday and Friday. So now is Friday, we can see his today's subject is shown in today's subject area. So in the activity request, as we can see, shows the information of the professor and his or her activity request. In this example, we haven't created yet. So let's go and create one. So go to the create activity request where the user or professor can add their activity request. So now let's select a subject where we want the activity request to be added. So now let's select a subject where we want the activity request to be assigned. The description of the activity request, let's say, please finish. And then let's choose a file to add. Or you can also skip that part but in here let's choose uh, okay this one and submit it and now we can see that the activity request is added and surely enough the admin will have the notification in the bell ring area now let's go to the attendance status in here we'll see the tardiness absences or the present test of the professor and we can see the date of it and subject date detail. So the date is Friday, April 17, 2020. The subject detail is here and the status. So he is marked absent, Friday 17, 2020. And this box right here is the remarks section where the user or professor submits to let the admin know the reason on why, for example, he or she is absent or late. So let's say for example in here send it and now we can see that the reason is has been added. We can also edit this reason. Let's say for example instead of April 17 do it 15 to 2020 send it we edited the reason. So that's it for the tutorial and thank you.